So welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on Project Snowman this week. Picking up where I left off last Saturday. I'm still working on this back panel and I've been trying to go around the side and clean up all the huck rivets there and I'm just thinking as I clean this up I'll keep working forward until we get all the way to the front of the truck and then we can put some primer and paint on it. But this week I wanted to try something new. Again, in my never-ending study of the movie truck, I noticed in one particular scene that the movie truck had, it's either lights or reflectors right in this location here. And I believe it was probably reflectors because there was reflectors on this truck. They were kind of, uh, they were plastic and they were broken. So I sheared them off and then, then I noticed the movie truck and then I realized, oh, I better add something back on there. But I thought, I don't want to necessarily add reflectors. I thought we'd one-up that. So I went over to Lesco and I got actual working signal lights with chrome rings. So we'll put them in like so. We'll cut the holes and we'll mount those in there. But similar to the signal light or the uh, clearance light that I put in the hood with these chrome rings, I didn't like the fact that they were chrome. Because obviously this truck is going to be uh, closer to black. It's actually a coffee black. So uh, if you've seen earlier episodes, you'll notice that I used a uh, Hyundai, I think it's called Midnight Brown or something. So it's brown in the daylight, but it's black all the other times. So I thought, I don't really like this chrome ring because it's going to stand out too much, and let, just like it's doing on the front there. So I thought I'd try something different today. I wanted to actually experiment and see if I could blast off the chrome and then powder coat it black. So I bought a little powder coating machine and a and a little toaster oven. So we'll see if we can actually powder coat these black and mount those in there. And then we'll just keep working and uh, working our way forward, trying to get this truck ready for, uh, ready for the road, ready for summer. All right, let's mark this out. Something like that looks like a center line. Oh, maybe a little lower. We'll trust that the guys at the factory put that reflector in the right spot. And then we'll do, I don't know, three and a half inches maybe. Okay, so I'm a big fan of these Milwaukee hole dozers. Again, Milwaukee's not a sponsor, but wish they were. They sure got some nice stuff. Regardless, I'll keep buying it. Just like that. Almost. There. One frisbee. Oh, there's an interior one too. Okay. I don't think we need to cut through that. Hmm, it's good asbestos. Let's see how the light fits in there. So these are the same rings. If you watched me last winter, I put uh, I put four lights on the back of the cab on the peak. Oh, that's nice. And I don't have to cut the interior. And this guy will just snap in like that. Now these are LEDs. I can't seem to find incandescent, but they're the, uh, the older style concentric rings. So it looks a little more classic. Oh, yeah, I spoke too soon. Now, I'll have to, hmm. yeah, I'll never get the plug on. So, what I might have to do is, oops. Might have to punch a little hole in there. 
to give some access. Yeah, maybe a smaller one like that. Again, I, cause it's gonna cut, if I use the full size, it'll actually cut into the channel there. So I think this might just be easier and cleaner. Nice. Now there's, as I was saying, I wanted to go, I wanted to not just fancy it up instead of having a reflector, having a signal light here. It makes sense because it's almost a safety device because sometimes when you have a, a four wheeler or a passenger vehicle kind of right beside you, that person may not see the signal light on the front fender or obviously the, the one at the back of the truck. So it's always good to have a signal light to let people know you're coming over. All right, so do the same thing the other side and then we'll We'll see how hard it's gonna to be to, to powder coat these guys black. So I thought I might as well get rid of this knife edge too, because that's a hazard waiting to happen. So in the previous episode, you'll have seen me grinding away, polishing all these huck bolts, and then I continued working on that. Took a heck of a lot of time just to get around this edge and, and do that. But not only does it take time, it actually goes through these sanding pads. So I took a look on Amazon and I got a whole box of the Scotch Bright pads. I think it's 25 and it was just around $30. So that's a little over a buck of pads. So that's a, that was a way better deal than what I was spending at Canadian Tire. So I figure these guys will will help clean up that knife edge as well. So we'll just go ahead and do that. I should have a face shield because stuff's going everywhere. That's better. Okay, so I've done some research and you can't powder coat chrome. It uh, just won't stick to it, obviously. And so all you need to do to actually powder coat a piece of metal that's actually been chromed is to etch it. So you just do a little light sandblasting just to get it rough and then we can actually get the, the powder to stick to it. So I just bought a little sandblasting gun from Princess Auto. Power Fist makes the best stuff. <laughs> I say no they don't but it's cheap I got a little container of sand this shouldn't take too much just to rough up that front face so we'll see how this little little blast gun works Now I'll probably open the door and maybe do it outside or at least let some fresh air in. And in case you're wondering, yep, it's still winter. Okay. Let's do this quick before I lose all my heat. Ah, junk. Couldn't get this thing to work to save my life, so. Back to Princess Auto to try something else, I guess. Uh, 
stuff like this that really eats into a day. Oh, I need one of these someday. I wonder if I should just get a cabinet. That's not a bad idea. 200 bucks. Oh man, fixing up trucks is expensive. So I get just a plain gun. That's what I bought that didn't work. That looks like just like a hobby gun. What should I do? What should I do? Yeah, maybe the cabinet's the best idea. Because I'll be blasting other stuff and then I don't have to worry about sand going everywhere. Okay, we're back in business. Now, I still need, my plan with the shop is I want to build a nice wood workbench. Probably three feet out, four feet high and go the whole length from the toolbox to the to the power panel there. And my dad promised he was gonna come over and help me build it. But for now, we're just gonna have to throw it on the table here just to get these rings cleaned up. This reminds me back in high school, we used to have a blast cabinet. And guys would always use the blast gun and blast out the fingers of the gloves. Instructions say put in seven liters of sand. And what a goofy measurement because they come in 25 pound bags. So I did some math and it's about, or they come in 50 pound bags. So my math comes out to about 25 pounds. So about half a bag of this recycled glass should work. Okay. Boy, this has been a lot of work to, uh, de-chrome these rings. Okay. Oh yeah, it's working. Nice. How nice that worked. See it etched it right out. Chrome's gone. Okay, do that to the other rings and then we'll try powder coating. So these were the other rings that I was talking about. I installed these all back in the summer and trying to copy the movie truck. So I wanted to get a uh, clearance light about halfway up the hood. Now, but the movie truck didn't use a ring like this. The movie truck just had the light. And I've seen other Kenworths on Instagram and on the internet that, uh, that have that light there, but I've never seen one in, in real life. So I don't know how that light is actually mounted to the hood. And I still haven't been able to figure that out because this is just too thin. There's no way that, because this is supposed to look like this. It's not supposed to have that ring around it. And there's just nothing, there's no material there to actually get it to hold in place. So it must have been a special groat light that had a, maybe a plastic ring in behind and you just push it through. But either way, I can't seem to, uh, to find that. So we'll use the ring, but like I was saying, I'll, I'll sandblast it and then we'll powder coat it black. And then the black against the dark brownish black paint, it won't stand out as much. And then it'll look like just the light is sitting there on its own. Okay. Take the other side off and we'll get this blasted. So next I'm just going to hang the parts. Using some MIG wire.
So I skimmed the instructions, so I kind of know what I'm doing, I think. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Okay, so the gun's got powder. Now, we gotta hook up the electrical. And they say it's best if you get it right attached to the part, so we'll just put it right in behind here. On the back. And you want pretty low air pressure, so I put an extra regulator on there. Okay. Now we need power. On. We got a little foot pedal here to get the voltage going. Oh, I see, you gotta push it and hold it. Huh, cool. There it goes. Huh, just like paint. Oh, that's looking good. Give her a little more air. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, so again, this is kind of a, a trial that I'm doing. So I got the got the sandblast box now. I've got the powder coater. But the last stage is you got to put it in the oven for about uh, 20 minutes at 400 degrees. And I wanted to go and actually, I went on Kijiji to just get a regular oven because Mrs. Twin Six was like, no way, you're not putting truck parts in my, uh, <laughs> in the same oven that I put cookies and roasts in. So I was going to actually go get a, uh, you can get old ovens that where the, maybe the burner's not working, or whatever, they're, they're free to haul away, but I don't have the right plug. So I'd actually have to put another breaker in my panel and then put a plug in, which I might do if this turns out but for now i just went and got this little used guy off of kijiji from someone that wanted to upgrade and it was only 20 bucks so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get it to 400 degrees and then let it cook in there just like a batch of cookies for 20 minutes so i'll go and grab the parts and we'll throw them in gotta be careful not to touch the part when you're doing this and it looks like I just did. Darn it. Okay. Guess I gotta give that one another little blast. Yeah, I smudged it with my with my glove. Okay. First you don't succeed, try, try again. There, threw another quick coat on there. Maybe I'll pull this grill out. Need an oven mitt. There, perfect. There. Okay, put on a 20 minute timer and come back and see how they look. Yeah, so look at that. We're about seven minutes in and they're already getting shiny. So they say once you get a sheen, you only need about another 10 minutes. So we'll turn that guy like that. And those things should be ready. Looking sharp. Yeah, okay, that's pretty close. Fresh batch of cookies, look at that. Just look at it. <laughs> that looks really nice. So we'll let that cool, and I've done some reading. You can actually powder coat on top of powder coat. So if I want to give it a go, because it looks like there's one little imperfection there, I might give it another spray after they cool and, uh, and build it up even thicker. But that is looking really nice. Now you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you just buy black rings? And unfortunately you can't. The only black rings you can buy for uh, the four inch lights anyway, are the rubber rings and they just don't look right. So that's why I wanted to go through all the trouble today of blasting these and, uh, and fixing them up. But I like that. All right, so something like that. Yeah, that'll be nice because the ring will now fade into the background with the, with the, dark, with the dark paint. And so it'll just kind of, the light will just stand out on its own. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So, of course you learn by trial and error. And one thing I learned, I was getting a little too 
excessive with the, the wire. I was wrapping it like it was going to go out in a snowstorm or something. So I think what's better is just to have a little hook because that way you can lift it off without touching the part. Because what was happening was the wire, when I had it wrapped in a loop, it rubbed a little bit. But no big deal. We'll put another, another coat on and run it through the oven again. Ah, nice. Whoa! <laughs> Don't make connection, Mark. Yeah, this is much better. You don't even touch the part. Just lay it on the grill and take the wire out. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm hunting around looking for more stuff that I can powder coat. So I pulled this cover plate off the heater core and it just kind of had a rough paint job on it and still kind of kind of rusty so what I'm going to do is sandblast this and then we'll hang it and powder it and bake it because it should fit in that little oven and then I might try just like the the hood pull I might try and mask this off and either paint the Kenworth logo or maybe mask it off and get uh, yellow I only got black powder today but maybe yellow or gold powder and I could spray this and powder coat it just like the hood pull but for now we'll just do it black but cool I'm enjoying this Oh. oh yeah, I turned I turned the pressure down for the powder coat gun. We'll just ramp that right up. There. Look how quick it cleans it. Yeah, I'm happy with this investment. Now I can do some neat stuff. So I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to actually lay the part on the grill instead. Something like that. And then go throw that in the oven. That turned out really nice. I'm digging this. So now I'm just doing a second coat on the on the big taillight rings. And then when they cool, we can go ahead and put them in the back of the bunk. Yeah, those look really nice in there. Some black screws, I think they look really sharp. Now, of course, those are just temporarily put in there. I'll take them back out to paint the truck and then we'll put them in when we finally get everything done. But I just wanted to see how they look. And yeah, that, that turned out really sweet. And like I always say, truckers love lights and shiny things, so I thought why not put, why not wire the, the lights up just temporarily here to the battery, just to see how they're going to look. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks awesome. Okay, well, we guess one step closer to the movie truck. And I now know how to powder coat. Learn something new today, that's always fun. So I, uh, Hope you enjoyed following along. Maybe you learned something too and appreciate everyone out there watching. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the comments down below. And uh, you know, still a long way to go on this truck, but, but we'll get there. I just don't know how to stop once I start something. So yeah, we'll just keep working away and I guess we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and uh, don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it.